I want to make an appeal to indie creators, the creators that haven't gotten to Marvel, DC, Image, uh, even Dynamite, even the smaller tiers. You know who you are. The people who are coming up into comics. I'd like to, to really talk to you in this video. Hey there, this is Perch. Um, you know, over the years, I've met lots and lots of independent artists. I've, I've, I've met the artists with the portfolios who look longingly at the tables at Artist Alley, who have a dream, and that dream is to draw some of uh, the biggest, the biggest superheroes, the biggest comics, or, or maybe to change comics, maybe to not do that Kate book and to put out a uh, some some new thing for Marvel for DC to get out there. They're, their idols are people like uh, like Frank Miller, like Rena Telgemeier, Telmeiger, like Colleen Doring, um, like Neil Gaiman, like Brian Michael Bendis. Uh, there are there are lots of people out there who have their favorites, who uh, who love this this comic industry, and since they were young, since they were you know in their 10, 12, they they had some aptitude for drawing or for writing and. and they knew what they wanted to do. They wanted to make comics. And then as they got older, they, you know, they came to realize that that dream of chasing comics isn't a very profitable one. It's, it's one that's going to be a hard road. It's a, it's a tough life. Um, it's not like you have a nice, clean, go to school for four years, study programming, get out, you know, get recruited by Google or Amazon, join one of a hundred thousand people who are all, developing some tiny corner of code and you get a regular you know monthly check you have to contemplate things like a 401k and that's your life um there that's a great life you know that's a very stable very secure life in a lot of cases it's it's one that affords you a lot of free time to have hobbies to buy a tesla to, to do all kinds of things but for some of us you have the the bug inside of you. You have this belief that you, that you you can make it. You you've got a story to tell. You've got a story to draw. And I know what that feels like. I I have a story to tell, and I have a story to draw. I was the guy. The person you're listening to is the person who took the safe road. In in a lot of cases, if you can call running a comic shop and doing consulting and doing that type of work in technology safe, that was me. I took that safe road. I I chickened out at the last minute. I didn't draw my portfolio. I didn't sit for hours and hours uh, creating the characters. I, I never, I, I went to a lot of conventions and I started the shop, shop really, really early in my life, really young, uh, before I was out of school. Um, and in that time, the comics were selling off the shelves. So I got kind of a fake view of, of what running a comic store was like. It was just success. Everything was just success, which was great. But as I went to cons and I met people and I learned about these personalities, I was fascinated to know more. My natural drive as a person was to really uncover what this business was all about and, and who was involved and how to optimize it, how to accelerate it. Um, these aren't necessarily artistic you know, feelings. These aren't creative things. Creative people will have a story to tell and they set out to tell it no matter what. You know, the mechanics, the, the, uh, operation of it doesn't matter as much to them as the as the mission as the destiny sorry it's the destination it's not the mission uh you know somebody pointed out uh, a couple days ago you know bob ross uh, he was somebody who's been picked apart as not being a true artist he's done all these videos showing you the science and the mechanics of painting but he gets attacked by members of the creative community for not being a real artist because he he understands the mechanics of how to construct a painting or a scene or, or an element. And in his videos, they, they had to push him to talk about, you know, happy little accidents and, and things that, that were more free form because his videos did come off too clinical. Uh, but does that make him any less of an artist? I, I don't know. Uh, at any rate, I, I took this, this, you know, I, for lack of a better, I'll be hard on myself. I took this coward's path of understanding the mechanics and the operations and, and pushing and selling into there. Other people, I've watched many people. Uh, unfortunately, you know, for every success I've seen, for every friend I had who, who wanted to do this or, or customer that wanted to be in comics actually made it. 
you know, of people I knew personally, that's probably 12, 12 people that made it, which is a pretty high number of the people who wanted to be there, hundreds, maybe thousands. So the success rate is not good. It is an all or nothing kind of gamble that you take. And a lot of people don't make it and they wash out and they do something else. And, and maybe they have regrets, the, the what ifs, what if they could have made it? But I, I respect the bravery of people who set out and go to do it and, and make those comics and, and live that, you know, fulfill that dream. Whether your dream is to write or draw Spider-Man or whether your dream is to write or draw your own property that, that takes comics in a new direction and tells a new kind of story. They're both excellent dreams. And I, I, all I, I, what I want is for people to be successful at that. I really do. Um, the way people hurt me most on uh, Twitter or social media is when they accuse me of being a bad actor, of when they accuse me of, uh, well, he's saying these, somebody said it really ticked me off. And I think other people noticed uh, because I, I got all these, these messages like, hey, man, are you OK? Um, it was the people who come in and say, oh, he talks nice and he talks all reasonable, but there's a hidden agenda underneath the surface. He's actually just trying to to really convert people into you know hate and and the alt-right or, or whatever, you know, the, the thing of the day is. Um, and I can tell you, I, I'm, I mean what I say. I, I celebrate success. When the Eisner winners come out, I celebrate their success. I'm glad for people to, to win that award. Whoever they are, whatever they've said on social media, I want success in this business. That is my driving force. And I wish I was part of it in a more direct way. You know, I, I would like to write a comic. I would like to draw a comic. I, I hope to do that someday, but that window is closing. I, I know it is. Um, comics, in many cases, is, is a young person's game in the sense that if you're trying to get into the business, so much of it relies on network and on uh, friends and on, on a little bit of luck uh, of getting through and a, and a willingness to accept you know, some level of poverty early on to get to that finish line. You know, there are people who make it, there are people who network, but this is not a business that rewards nice guys. You know, there are, and that's not to say there aren't nice guys in the business. There are, of course, many, many nice guys. But just having that that desire to push comics forward, just having that desire to be part of this industry, to do good things, to sell comics, to entertain people, um, you know, that that's not enough for me. I can't get in with that. You need more. You know, having a little bit of talent. I, I've got a little bit of talent, not nearly as much as, as the hundreds and thousands of people who have come and tried and failed. But you're out there, and maybe you are this indie creator, maybe you are this person with this dream. And I, I want to give you kind of three pieces of advice. And it's just this is coming from my you know years of watching it happen. So number one, my first piece of advice, uh, listen to everyone. The more you limit your network, the more you pick you know, a small handful of people to listen to, the less perspective you're going to get, the, better, the bigger gamble you're going to have. There are a lot of entry points into comics. People will tell you it's a very small community, and that's true. It is, but there's a number of different groups and factions and, and, uh, and people within that community. So you can't come in and just listen to one and insult the other or turn a blind eye on the other. If you do, you're, you're, you're taking what is a 1 in 100 shot at making it into the business and making a 1 in 500 shot. You're just hurting your own chances. Don't limit your audience. That's my first piece of advice. My second piece of advice is um, comics changes fast. It doesn't seem like it. You'll meet lots of people who have been comic veterans forever, and it's a bit of a trick. Because when you go to cons or you go to these these meetups or signings or whatever else, you're you're seeing people who have been in the business for so, for some time. You're seeing the stability at the tip of the business. You're not seeing the massive undercurrent underneath it. And the reality is, comics changes a lot. And if you want the science behind that, if you see, I always go back to the mechanics. If you want the mechanics to prove this statement, take a look at the just a months of the comics. And look at the amount of creators, the, the writers, the artists, the colorists. Take a look at the volume of people that are in comics on any given month. It is a huge, huge influx and outflux of talent. 
look at a title, especially some of the earlier, the, the lower selling titles and look at the changes that happen from month to month. There's a lot of people coming in and out of this business all the time. So when people tell you, hey, uh, I'm your secret to get in, I'm your key, you need to be friends with me or you need to listen to me and me only, remember that, that massive sea change that's happening underneath the surface. Don't Kind of like the first piece of advice, don't tie yourself to one person, don't tie yourself to one group because the world will change in a year's time and suddenly that stable network that you worked hard to build, it disappears. Uh, the last piece of advice, and I, I, you know, I'm giving you three pieces of advice. I'm, I'm hoping are a little bit different. I'm talking to your career. The, of course, you need to do things like hone your craft, practice, practice, practice. Just draw, get, get pages out, uh, build your portfolio in a clean way, uh, have your scripts. You know, all, all of that is obviously critical advice. But um, the third piece of advice I'll, I'll give you just in the, in the sense of, uh, of helping your career, is be gracious. And what I mean by that is it's very common to go to cons or go to signings, go to meetups, go to any of these things. And you will see lots of people who have had their first tiny taste of success. And when I say tiny, I don't mean they've got a comic at Marvel or they've, They've, uh, you know, signed some deal with DC for the new talent program or anything like that. I'm talking literally they're going to draw four pages in a backup series or something from from Boom or or, you know, some tiny, tiny little publisher. And they have that first piece of success. And naturally, they pat themselves on the back. Naturally, they feel like they've made it. It's, it's a hard climb to get there. And that first piece of success is the, the first piece to the career that they've been wanting. But it's also the part where so many people blow up because they take that first piece of success and they automatically assume that all the rest of the pieces are just going to follow behind it now. They can kind of take their foot off the gas. It's just going to happen for them. And the reality is it won't. You have to keep pushing and you have to keep being gracious because life is going to be a number of, of starts and stops. And if you build yourself too much, you get too arrogant. You get to, uh, you know, you get to, to, to brag and boast to your network too often. You will get knives from, from in front and from behind. Your own network will, will attack you. And the fans will not connect with you. People who you hope to get the next, the second job, or the third job, will look to someone else. Be gracious to everyone. Now, this is going to be hard because right now there's a lot of people telling you that you should be gracious to one group and not the other. They should be telling you that you should fight, that not everyone is equal. And there's a statement that, that's kind of gone around and be, been kind of twisted and turned of there's, there's very fine people on all sides. Well, I want to kind of give you the counter to that. There's, very, there's awful people on both sides. That's the better way to see it. You shouldn't connect yourself to groups that are that are lousy or bad or out to cause trouble. Absolutely not. But you should be willing always to have that open heart, to have that open hand, so that when somebody comes and, and compliments you or you know wants to do right by you or wants to give you an opportunity, you have the ability to take it or not. You can always say no to a job. If somebody offers you something and you, you know, you come to find out you don't like the creators involved or it doesn't fit with your um, whatever, whatever you're into. That's totally fine. It's good, in fact, but you should still want that opportunity to come your way. You want to choose whether you turn it down or not. And the way you do that is you be gracious. You be gracious to the people who came before you that worked as hard as you or harder to build this business. And you get be gracious to the people who are coming next who are going to also contribute to this, this big story of comics. I, I don't know, you know, if I could go back in my life. Yeah. I, I wish, I wish I had done things differently. I wish I had taken more risks. It's funny to, to stand here with uh, the big risks I did take. I, I took major risks in my life, personally, professionally, all over the place. Some of them worked, some of them didn't. Um, you, you have to, do what you think is right and, and be willing to accept that sometimes you won't win. 
but I, I wish I'd taken a shot at it. I wish I had done this. Um, you know, who knows what the future may bring, but for those of you who are out there, I, I encourage you fight, get your, get your work out there, fight for that success. I'll fight to be in this industry. It's worth fighting for. You know, I have two daughters. They're both young. One shows a heavy, heavy aptitude for drawing. Likes it, loves it. It's in her spirit. I hope she does better than I do. I hope she takes that risk and that gamble. Because, you know, honestly, comics needs her. Comics needs all of you. So there you go. Indie creators, you're coming up. I, I, you know, there's some advice, but I guess I'll end with this. I want to give you encouragement. I'm cheering for you. Whether you like me, whether you've blocked me, it doesn't matter. I, I'm still cheering you on, and I hope you make it. Thanks for listening.